Good morning. So much has changed over the last few weeks. Normally, we would all be together at the Walk of the Cross. But since that is not a possibility today, we wanted to still be together with you, remembering the death of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning, we are going to read the scriptures together, worship together, and take communion. So if you have some bread or crackers, juice or wine at home, please get it ready as we partake at the end of our time together in communion. As we open the scriptures together and travel through the pages of the gospel, gospels, our prayer is that we together will let the inspired words of God take hold of our hearts as we worship Jesus for giving up his life in order that we may live. His life-giving sacrifice is our hope today. Somehow, though, nothing feels good about Good Friday. As we read how our Lord was beaten and crushed and hung on that cross, it may actually stir some questions as to why did it have to happen like that? And that's okay. It's good to ask questions. The scriptures record beautifully why Jesus did what he did. Love, love, love is why Jesus did what he did. Chris Tomlin has a song entitled, At the Cross, and the chorus reads like this. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you. I owe all to you, Jesus. Matthew 26, 36 to 46. Jesus prays in Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and he said, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and bowed his face to the ground, praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away, unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Then he came to the disciples and said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. Drench my soul, the 
His mercy and grace unfold a hunger and thirst, a hunger and thirst. With arms stretched wide, I know you hear my cry. Speak to me now. Speak to me now. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. I surrender I want to know you more I want to know you more Like a rushing wind Jesus, breathe within, Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way in me, like a mighty storm, stir within my soul, Lord, have your way. chapter 14, Jesus is betrayed and arrested. And immediately, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders. The traitor, Judas, had given them a prepared signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Then you can take him away under your guard. As soon as they arrived, Judas walked up to Jesus. Rabbi, he ex exclaimed, and gave him the kiss. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled his sword out and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Jesus asked them, am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there among your teaching every day. These things are happening to fulfill what the scripture said about me. Then all his disciples deserted him and ran away. One young man following behind was clothed only in a long linen shirt. When the mob tried to grab him, he slipped out of his shirt and ran away naked. They took Jesus to the high priest's home, where the leading priests, the elders, and the teachers of religious law had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed him at a distance and went right into the high priest's courtyard. 
There he sat with the guards, warming himself by the fire. Inside, the leading priests and the entire high council were trying to find evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death, but they couldn't find any. Many false witnesses spoke against him, and they, but they contradicted each other. Finally, some men stood up and gave this false testimony. We heard him say, I will destroy the temple. This, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days I will build another made without human hands. But then they didn't even get their story straight. Then the high priest stood up before the others and asked Jesus, Well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus was silent and made no reply. Then the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror, and he said, Do we need any other witnesses? You have all heard this blasphemy. What's your verdict? Guilty, they all cried. He deserves to die. Then some of them began to spit at him, and they blindfolded him and beat him with their fists. Prophesy to us, they jeered, and the guards slapped him as they took him away. Precious blood has left me forgiven, pure like the whitest of snow, powerful to make sin and shame. Mark 15, 1 to 15, Jesus' trial before Pilate. Very early in the morning, the leading priests, the elders, and the teachers of religious law, the entire high council, met to discuss their next step. They bound Jesus, led him away, and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, you have said it. 
Then the leading priests kept accusing him of many crimes, and Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer them? What about all these charges they are bringing against you? But Jesus said nothing, much to Pilate's surprise. Now it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner, anyone the people requested. One of the prisoners at that time was Barabbas, a revolutionary who had committed murder in an uprising. The crowd went to Pilate and asked him to release a prisoner as usual. Would you like me to release Would you like me to release to you this king of Jews? Pilate asked. For he realized by now that the leading priests had re- had arrested Jesus out of envy. But at this point, the leading priests stirred up the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas instead of Jesus. Pilate asked them, Then what should I do with this man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Why? Pilate demanded. What crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, Crucify him. So to pacify the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip, whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Chapter 23, The Crucifixion. As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Serene, 
happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldier seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd trailed behind, including many grief-stricken women. But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming when they will say, Fortunate indeed are the women who are childless, the wombs, the wombs that have not borne a child, and the breasts that have never nursed. People will beg the mountains, fall on us, and plead with the hills, bury us. For if these things are done when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. When they came to the place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross. And the criminals were also crucified, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched, and the leaders scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself he's, if he's really God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked him, too, by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. A sign was, fasc was fastened above him with these words, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed, So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourselves, and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested, Don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes. But this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. And as we prepare for communion today, don't let just these words be something that you hear and appreciate. But like those voices with Jesus on the cross, what will communion, what will the cross of Jesus mean to you? A spectacle? Or like that thief on the cross? life change as he made the message of the cross his own. Oh, come 
to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, oh what a Savior, isn't he? the death of Jesus and the burial of Jesus. The death of Jesus. Jesus knew that, it, that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put it on the hispus branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and released his spirit. It was a day of preparation, and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies hanging there the next day, which was the Sabbath, and a very special Sabbath, because it was the Passover. So they asked Pilate to hasten their deaths by ordering that their legs be broken, then their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came up and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water flowed out. This report is from an eyewitness giving an accurate account. He speaks the truth so that you also may continue to believe. These things happen in fulfillment of scriptures they, that say, No one of his bones were, will be broken and they will look on the one they pierced. Afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. When Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus that night. He brought about 75 pounds 
a perfumed ointment made from myrrh and aloes. Following Jewish burial custom, they wrapped Jesus' body with the spices in long sheets of linen and cloth. The place of crucifixion was near a garden where there was a new tomb never used before. And so because it was a day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. So now, family, we are going to take communion together. And one of the things that we know from Scripture is that um, the followers of Jesus at the time, they were preoccupied with two things. They were preoccupied with when the kingdom of God was going to come and what their role would be in it. We know from the Last Supper that there was even some discussion of who will be the greatest among us. And at that meal, that last meal with his beloved disciples, Jesus said, (laughs) it's all about sacrifice. I want you to remember me. And he gave them the this beautiful thing that we have today so that they could remember that it wasn't about who was going to be the greatest amongst them, but that we could follow Jesus' example by giving all. If we are to follow Jesus, it's all about sacrifice and surrender. And Jesus was saying, I want you to remember me. And so Jesus told them, As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and he blessed it. And then he broke it in pieces and he gave it to the disciples. And he said this, take this, eat it, for this is my body. So let's partake together. And he took a cup of wine, and he gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink for it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many.
the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendering out. author of Hebrews writes this, so if our sins have been forgiven and forgotten, why would we ever need to offer another sacrifice for sin? And now we are brothers and sisters in God's family because of the blood of Jesus, and he welcomes us to come right into the most holy sanctuary in the heavenly realm, boldly with no hesitation. For he has dedicated a new, life-giving way for us to approach God. For just as the veil was torn in two, Jesus' body was torn open to give us free and fresh access to him. And since now we have a magnificent king priest to welcome us into God's house, we come closer to God and approach him with an open heart, fully convinced by faith that nothing will keep us at a distance from him. For our hearts have been sprinkled with blood to remove the impurity. And we have been freed from an accusing conscience and now we're clean, unstra unstained, and presentable to God inside and out. So now we must cling tightly to the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promises. Discover creative ways to encourage others and motivate them towards acts of compassion, doing beautiful works of expressions of love. What a beautiful, beautiful portion of scripture to end our time together. Let's just pray together. Jesus, we are just so incredibly moved right now. Moved by your love. Moved by your sacrifice. And not only moved emotionally, but completely transformed from the inside out because of what you did at Calvary, because of your willingness to go to the cross. We can come right into the Father's presence. You made that way for us, Jesus. And we are so incredibly thankful, so incredibly thankful, Jesus, for what you did for us. Thank you for sending your spirit that guides us and comforts us and teaches us all things. And I just pray, Lord, that today as we continue our day, Lord, we would just be filled with this gratitude that because of you and because of your sacrifice, we have hope. 
We have hope for our future, knowing that you are in control, knowing that you have made a way to the Father, knowing that you have washed us clean. Jesus, how we love you, how we love you. I pray that we would be willing to surrender all to you and follow you wherever you call us to go and whatever you ask us to do and whatever you ask us to say, would our lives, would our lives be a testimony of our thanksgiving to you and for what you have done for us. And it's in the beautiful, precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.